Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Ask the Pediatricians Live. As usual, we'll be having our pediatrician be taking us on topics related to child health. Invite your friends and family, join in into this video. Please let's remember that if you're watching from the shared links, you need to post your questions on the main video, not on the shared video, please. For us to be able to see your questions and attend to them, your questions need to be on the main video itself. The video you're watching now is on the Ask the Pediatricians Foundation page. You need to be on the foundation page to follow us. Once again, call friends and family. Let's all learn together from the pediatrician. My guest for today is no other person than our chief pediatrician, Dr. Bemisola Boyede. Dr. Bemisola, you're welcome, ma'am. Dr. Bemi Sola, are you still with us? Hello, Dr. Bemi Sola. Okay, I think we're having a technical glitch. Please just hold on for us. She'll be joining soon. She'll be joining soon. Whilst we're waiting for her, please, please, please invite your friends and family.
Thank you for joining, Paul. Thank you for joining. Please just give us a few minutes and we'll be back. Whilst we're waiting for Dr. Bemisola, please invite friends and family. Tobilaba, welcome. Thank you for joining. Dr. Oge, you're welcome, ma'am. Thank you for joining. For Lucio, you're welcome. Thank you very much for joining. Good to have you here. We're having just a slight technical glitch. Whilst we're waiting for doctor, let's just invite friends and family. Can we just all then on well, with the questions for now, please? I know, I know we are all eager to have our questions answered, but can we just calm down? It's an open house. Yes, it's going to be an open house. And any question, as long as it's relating to child health, Dr. Wimisola would attend to them. We apologize once again. Doctor will be joining us shortly. Vera James, you're welcome. Thank you for joining.
Se, Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm sorry for the <laughs> freaking transmission I had. Tommy, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Welcome back, doctor. I want to sincerely apologize for all the <laughs> technical issues we had. And then uh, also for starting at 11 a.m. Nigerian time. I'm actually somewhere right now where it's actually 10 o'clock. So <laughs> I'm not really adjusted to the time changes and all that i apologize for that so uh thank you all for um staying tuned and for not uh, uh for sleeping with us this morning thank you so much i really appreciate it. and i also have some technical issues getting my internet on but it's okay right now uh so welcome to acp life this saturday morning and i'm happy to be here so me how are you doing <laughs> I'm very well, thank you, ma'am. All right, okay. So good to have you back online. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, so today we are not really having any specific topic to discuss, but we it's going to be uh, an open house thing. So you are free to ask any question you have on child health issues. Uh, so um, any health issues. Uh, any question related to child health issues, you can just drop it for us and we'll be happy to take it. Um, you just drop your questions and comments and then we'll be able to take it. And if you're watching on the watch party, if you can click on the video, you'll be able to get to where you can drop your question live and direct. Otherwise, our moderators, I'm sure, can help you copy your questions, whether you're watching on ATP, um uh active generations group or you're watching on the atp family group as well all your questions are welcome so thank you so much for joining us this morning uh you're welcome to atp live all right uh, thank you doc we have we have a couple of questions already okay um can i grind solid food like rice carrots and egg to give him okay i think she she, Sylvia, is asking about nutrition, and uh, this is one of the most commonly or uh, frequently asked questions on ask the pediatricians. And luckily for us now, we have a, a unique section that talks about all you need to know about breastfeeding, which is what we recommend for the first six months, and complementary feeding after six months. I would recommend, I would strongly recommend that you go through that uh, particular uh, unit. If you now Facebook has put this in the group in a way that once you enter the group, you could actually see the, that learning yeah. unit pop up right yes. at the top of the page. Preferably if you are using the laptop. I'm not so sure whether it's like that on the uh, on the phone, on mobile. The mobile. Yeah, on mobile. But if you go on our group, you will say that so you have to do the unit courses on nutrition uh nutrition one or two i think it will really answer all your questions because i mean we, it's something we can't answer it's okay for you to use those food but you really need to know the quantity you need to know how to uh have them together and things like that so i'll recommend that you do the nutrition course and then it will answer all your questions they are just short videos they are very 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 interesting it's not just reading stories and all that it's they are video they are practical videos and you know using uh common food that you can see how to go about it how frequently do you feed your child how do you go about the preparation and all that so chief sevia i'll recommend that you do that okay thank you okay i'm um, sorry just in addition if you're using a mobile phone once you come up to the page it's already on a tab there you can see it 
Even then on the mobile, so you can, yeah. Yes, on mobile. They've yeah. updated the mobile app, so it's easy okay. to access it on the mobile also. That's very fantastic. So we hopefully will have more units now that the unit is becoming more uh is it is i mean easier to assess on 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 our platform so that's aspiration facebook group by the way i'm sure you'll get your answer to your questions thank you Sylvia. Oh, so please can a baby of six months be taking fruit and can i deworm him at six months okay a yeah, baby of six months can take fruit but there's a way you have to process it so definitely they can take a solid food so if you're going to give something like orange you have to squeeze it out and then you have to dilute it if you want to give something like apple you have to blend it maybe preferably into the uh, cereal or something like that so there are ways to give fruits but you can't just give them fruits like you will give it to a one-year-old child or an adult so that's very important so Sylvia, i still recommend for you to do that cause and as regards the deworming we surely don't recommend deworming until the child is about one year old because we assume that a uh, child below that it accepts you're living in a very uh warm endemic area where there's lots of warm infestation and all that but or you are living in a rural area where you go to the farm or you take your children to the farm at that age we don't expect the children to really be exposed to warm infestation until they're about one year old when they will now start going uh walking and then they will start picking things so it's about exposure so even there are some countries where they don't the warm children regularly because they don't have any form of exposure to worms. But if you live in warm endemic area, uh, WHO recommends that we deworm the children regularly. And for in those areas, we recommend that you start at the age of one year. And so if you go to our Facebook, our on our on our, on this. Um, you can see our website also on, on this uh, platform already. And if you look at that, if you go there, you will see, uh, um, I'm trying to <laughs> try and show you the, the website link so that you can go there and you will see how to the warm, what, when to start the warming and how frequently you the warm. So you start it from age of one year, and you can do one at every six months and what kind of the warming medication you can use as well so all those information are on our website and I'll, I'll encourage you to do that or you can also visit our group as well and you also get that information thank you Sylvia. thank you doc the next question is by gift opera my kids always complain of stomach pain while having breakfast please what can be done to end it Okay, so number one, what is causing the stomach pain, you know, so there are many reasons why children complain of stomach pain. Some children complain of stomach pain because they don't want to go to school. They, 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 they just want something to kill them at home. And there's really absolutely nothing wrong with them, especially if you're complaining of break, stomach pain when having breakfast. I mean, that, that's very unusual. So I would rather you for, for, get to see a doctor and let them ask, there are more questions to be asked. There are physical examinations to do. So when people ask questions like this, um, there are many things that could cause abdominal pain. So there's no way, just by you saying my child have abdominal pain, what is the cause? There's no way we know what is causing the abdominal pain in your own child without asking more questions. And it is after asking all those questions that I will not be able to know why? But so because there are so many possible causes of the minimal pain, reading from the fact that children just use it as a kind of, I don't want to have breakfast or I don't want to go to school. So they complain of something that will make you to worry, and then maybe you will not be able to take them to school, or they may actually have. I mean, if all your children are doing it, I'm thinking that there's really nothing wrong because it's very unusual that everybody in the family will have the same illness at the same time same and all time. unless they are reacting to your food because they also have food allergies so i don't know what food you are giving mm. them something that oh, they are okay. they are intolerant mm. of and they are reacting to it then they can also complain of the terminal pain but the commonness in that age group but really when it is school days uh, it's usually, do they complain of abdominal pain when they're eating breakfast on weekends that's the way to know if they don't do that then 
it could just be a way of saying I don't want to go to school. <laughs> anyway, but uh, Sylvia, we just recommend that you. I mean, sorry. Um, gift. That's a gift. gift. I would recommend that you just see a pediatrician, a doctor, just to tease out what is the specific cause in your own children. Yeah. Okay. Um, Fumi care. We are not sure what question you're asking now. She says, "My son is tooling." And I have taken him to hospital. He was given antibiotics and treated for malaria. I guess Fumike has not yet completed his uh, question. So Fumike, if you are watching us, I think you, okay. I think she's completed it now. Okay, you can finish it up now. Okay, my question now is since we came back from the hospital, the pooing has not been normal. Okay. All right, so usually I, I, I repeat this often on ask pediatricians that uh, illnesses in children usually do not start in one day and they are not going to disappear in one day. <laughs> usually mothers have this uh, expectation that once they see us pediatricians and we just say you do this, then the very next minute you do that, it's everything comes going away and you're always like, ah, so you've gone to the hospital in one day. The diarrhea is not going to stop in one day. That's the honest, that's the honest truth. The most important thing is not the diarrhea itself, because I don't know why moms worry a lot about the stooling. The stooling is not what is killing the children. What will kill the child is the dehydration, is the loss of electrolytes, what we call electrolytes arrangements. And those are things that kill the children. So and the most important thing is like, as long as the child is getting the water and those electrolytes back into their body system, they will be fine. And then the stooling will eventually stop. Uh, there's a way, there's a reason why that is so. Because you see, what happens when children are stooling is that the lining of the stomach wall or the intestine, they are not absorbing things. That maybe the, the bacteria or the viruses that is causing that infection has invaded into those lining. So what the body normally do, does is to, is to remove all those lining that have been a disease or that have been damaged and then replace a new one and now that process takes about five days sometimes it take a few days it could take a little bit longer so until the body has replaced the new lining the, the study will not stop because it's those lining that absorb the water, that absorb everything, the electrolytes, and then, you know, do that. So that's why sometimes there's a gap. So what we are doing in the process of what we're still making sure, whether it's a virus, most times there's, no, there's nothing we can do about viruses. They are not going to take their time. Go, the body is going to remove the lining and replace a new one. If it's a bacteria, like if it's dysentery, then we'll give antibiotics and things like that. So, but in the process why the body will healing itself, the most important thing is to make sure that your child does not get dehydrated and that your child does not have any other complications of stolen which things like electrolytes imbalance, like the potassium may be low or the sodium may be low. And that is why we give the ORS. So when the child is taking the ORS, is replacing the water, and that's why we don't just say give ordinary water. It is ORS because it is not just the water, we're also giving the electrolytes. The and that is why it is scarce. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. all those other electrolytes are, that are being lost are also being replaced. So th that's basically what we do. So just keep giving your child the ORS, keep giving the electrolytes. Don't be tempted to give anything your doctor didn't give you. I know some mothers are listening to me. Some say, oh, don't listen to those doctors. So go and give <laughs> that a clean. Go and give this salazo or give diet stop. Give all this and yeah. it will stop. Now, there are reasons why we don't recommend all that because number one, those drugs, they, 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 they what they do is to slow down the intestine. That's basically what they do so that wow. The, wow. The, the flow of that water, that I mean, uh, the flow of things in the intestine gets slowed down. And then you have the impression because nothing is coming out. Coming and that, out. that is, is not passing So That's number one. Ooh. Number two, because they slow down the intestine, some of these viruses, some of those abnormal uh, damage lining, that needs to be removed. To come out. So you need to come out so that the new one, they just get stay there. And in that right. process, the body kind of absorbs some of those viruses and bacteria, absorb it into the blood. So the child now actually can become, you know, the illness can get worse because it's now moving from just the intestine 
into the bloodstream, then the child can have what we call sepsis or infection. So that is why we pediatrician we don't recommend using any of those agents to stop stalling we don't recommend and some of them also have very terrible side effects you know so the patients we give sync sync tends to shorten the duration it makes the healing of that intestinal wall faster but it will still take its time so it is only if it's going more than two weeks and the diarrhea is still there that is when i'll recommend that you now see you go back for follow up at the hospital. So I really took my time because sometimes when you tell mothers, don't worry, this, yeah. they, don't, they just think, oh, maybe this doctor, they don't know what they are doing, or this pediatrician, they are not the one packing this, you know, they don't understand. So I'm trying to take you into the, you know, every science is, uh, I mean, medicine is science. There's a reason behind everything we do. So that's basically what is going on. I hope this is clearer. Yeah. All right, thank you, Doctor. Um, Alima Babatunde is saying, my three years old son usually cries of tummy ache. Yeah, I think today is abdominal pain. I think we could just say today's topic. <laughs> Let's talk about abdominal pain and diarrhea. <laughs> it's about intestinal stuff. Okay, so there are many reasons why children could have abdominal pain, which I've already mentioned before. And most of the time, really, there's really nothing wrong because it's just sometimes children, children don't know how to localize their pain easily like mm. that. So sometimes they don't know, they, they are just not okay, but they may not know what to tell you or what, where, where is wrong. They just, sometimes they just feel like my tummy is paining me. It's easier to say, uh, they will say some other things like that. But the best thing is to, when your child complains of abdominal pain, the best thing is to for, for, um, ask questions then if you don't, you can give paracetamol. If the child is not better or you don't know what is causing the pain, sometimes children could complain of abdominal pain even from constipation. Constipation is a common mm -hmm. cause of abdominal pain in children. The fact that they've not been to the toilet, that's it. And some of them don't go to the toilet because they are watching TV or they are playing with their, they don't just want to go. So they hold it there because of what they are doing and then it's become a cumulative process. So that's why it's good to give water a lot, give fruits a lot and encourage good regular bowel habits. It's, it's okay that you don't go to toilet, even if it's just once a day. So they have a regular bowel habits. Just mm -hmm. taking them to the toilet and pouring is enough, and that's the end of the abdominal pain. Sometimes it could be other things, so, but if you think it, you've sorted out constipation, you've sorted out there's nothing else disturbing the child, like, like the other case I answered, maybe the children don't want to go to school in the morning and all that, then you can, and or the child is really having that serious pain, the child is not able, you, you really need to see the child to the hospital because there are other more, <clears throat> more sinister causes of abdominal pain, things that may land the child in, in the theater like the child may need surgery. So, but those are actually very severe abdominal pain, things like appendicitis, like it's susception. Uh, we call it acute abdomen generally. So you really need to go to the children emergency. But if dad is saying, I'm having abdominal pain, is he playing, is he running up and down, is he eating? <laughs> you just, just watch first, first, uh, you know, that's it. All right. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Thank you, doctor, for answering that. I know a lot of mothers that even ask that question, They've stored that somewhere. Yeah. Um, Ungazi Pauletta is asking, my son is 11. He's feeling pain on his breast. Mm. Yeah. So the question, what's the question? What does your there's, drop there's no question. That is just, that is just I, what she said. I know what the question The question is, why is the child having pain? Why, on why is he having pain? <laughs> okay, I hope that is your question, Ningazi. If not, you can just see, drop your questions and let us okay. know. Uh, okay, so uh, usually around the age of 11, uh, children, even from like 10, even some as early as 9, they start going through what we call puberty changes. They start having changes in their, what we call external, uh, uh, um, the external part of the reproductive system, the genital, and also including the breasts, including the pubic area, they start growing hair, their voice start changing. Pain in the breast is one of those signs of puberty as well. Oh, so okay. it can happen to boys, it can happen to girls. So we get that a lot in in children or teenage or adolescents who are undergoing puberty changes. So I will not worry about it. But sometimes they are very self conscious of their body and all that. But so just reassure you, okay, it's fine. It's most likely you're 
growing up now you're becoming a man because usually it will go after a while it's not something that will persist for a long time but of course if it is persisting long you think this is more than there may be something else here if you notice that you also notice that the breast bud is a little bit more prominent that the breast is a little bit more prominent than them you know but of course the girls will go on to have the bigger mounds and things like that but the boys that would be but the boys just feel a little bit pain and it should stop sometimes they can also feel pain in their testes area and all that as well you know so it just be it's those are signs of poverty and maybe that's the time for you to start having uh the conversation about sexuality and things like that it's an opportunity yeah okay so don't worry does it your boy is just growing hard yeah. thank you doctor Slim Bessie Oga is asking, please, what drugs can I use for PID infection? Okay, all right. So Slim Bessie, thank you for joining Ask the Pediatrician's Life. And as the name suggests, pediatricians are doctors who take care of children. <laughs> so we answer child health questions, basically. Uh, so I would recommend, number one, that you see your own doctor. Probably, I'm not sure whether you're a man or a woman, you can see your gynecologist if you're a woman i assume you pelvis well most likely a woman so you should see a gynecologist and number two please don't form the habit of asking people what drug should i use you shouldn't do that it's we which we do that a lot in in this part of the world <laughs> but it's not the right approach to to health issues number one for every health issue you should first see a doctor have proper diagnosis you may even thought you may even think it's a pid it may not necessarily be pid unless your doctor has given you diagnosis of pid and if a doctor give you pid for those who don't know is pelvic uh, inflammatory disease you know like infection in the pelvic area so if you are not sure i mean even if your doctor has given you diagnosis I, I assume that the doctor will likely also give you the um, drugs. medication immediately to use and those medications sometimes they are not like one day two days kind of medication they are things you have to use for a long time so uh slim bensi try see a doctor for their proper treatment and also the mothers on atp since we're on this question please don't always ask us when you ask a question what drug should i use you know we won't answer that we will answer you nicely but we will not prescribe any medication for you because it is not right. That is not how medical things are done. And we can't even write prescription online. We can't, we, it's be, it will not be right. We have to see the child, we have to examine the child, and we have to give you a proper prescription because it's a legal document. And for those of us in Nigeria, I always use every opportunity I have to educate. okay, f avoid this habit of just going to chemist jobs or pharmacy stores and say, just give me these drugs. This is what is wrong with my child. Just give me medication. Some of the people that dust on the mouth, some of them are not even medically trained. They are not pharmacists properly. The real or that pharmacist is uh, maybe somewhere else. It's, it's the, just the sales girls that are there. And some of them just give you anything. They are, they are in business. They want to sell. And we've had a lot of horror stories from such practices. So always try and see the doctors first. Let them write the prescription for you before you use. Don't just go and buy medication on your own and be using. Avoid um, self-medication, avoid uh, drug abuse. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. The next question is from Sandra Eze. My son is one year and six months. He only says two words, which is thick and thank you. Please, how can I make him talk? All right. Um, thank you, Sandra. Uh, your son is one year, six months. Uh, usually at that age, anyway, they usually just have about um, one year, you have about three words. So usually it's around 18 months, they begin to combine words. And then by two years, they should have two word phrases. I'm not so worried about your child, really, for now. I'm not so worried. I would just say, um, you may want to just uh, uh, observe for now and just uh, uh, keep speaking. So if you go on our page uh, or in our group, there are uh, posts on how to encourage uh, communication, how to, how to encourage child's language development. So 
things basically like you give the child the words, you don't always anticipate their needs, you give them opportunities to make choices. So if you want the child wants something, instead of the child just grabbing it, you can say if you can bring it out and let the child point to them. And then when the child points, then you give the word, oh, it's apple. Okay, like you can say say apple, then you give the apple. You can say, oh, it's biscuit. Say biscuit, then give the biscuit. So, so those are the ways by which you can encourage it. You allow the child to make choices. You observe. Don't you know mothers we are very, very good in knowing what our children want, even before the outside world, and you just I know it's time for food. I know it's time for water. You don't even allow them to talk. You don't allow them to make choices. So these are ways. And you play more with the children, more interactive play, not TV, not computer. You know, don't use those to babysit the children. Those are the ways by which you can simulate. And if there are more on our group, uh, so that you have more information on how to, um, you know, encourage your child to to speak better. So I will encourage you to visit our page and then we'll give you all the links, read it, and you can start practicing it. So just the, the way to get the child to speak is by also speaking to them and encouraging them and giving them the words, allowing them to make choices. So many options. And um, But if at any time you're still worried, actually most speech therapists do not worry about your child at this age because some children generally they are a little bit slower than the some children. Some children talk fast, some children talk, I mean, just like every other thing in life. So, but usually by the age of two, if your child is not yet combining like two word phrases and all that, then you may want to see a speech therapist. But now I'll just say keep playing with the child, keep encouraging the speech, and all that will be fine here. Okay, Fumike is back. She says, I just the one for him last two days. Please, what can I do to make the pool to be normal? Okay, Funke, just relax, eh? Just relax, relax. The stool will become normal when the body has finished the process. There's nothing, don't, there's no need for you to worry. It will turn normal. It's going to stop. The diarrhea will stop. I'm happy you've been to the hospital. I'm happy you are giving ORS and ORS thing. Just keep doing that. Sometimes it can go on for like 10 days. Sometimes it can go on. I know it's be very frustrating. And believe me, we've been, we doctors and pediatricians, we are looking for ways of how to see how we can shorten the duration. And that's one of the reasons why sync was introduced as well. Before it used to just be ORS. And sync helps to shorten the duration. But like I've to, I, I really took time to explain to you why we do what we do, why we don't recommend some medications. So just relax. The stool is not the problem. The most important thing is that your child is not dehydrated. The most important thing is that your child does not get uh, complications of electrolyte derangement. So, and I, I can assure you that as long as you're giving the ORS, as long as you're giving the uh, oral sink, those things will not happen. I can assure you. But if your child, for any reason, is not able to take ORS, or the child is vomiting persistently, or the child is passing blood in the stool, you need to take the child back to the hospital because in that case, if the child is not able to tolerate ORS or the child is vomiting persistently, we have to put uh, rehydration. We have to do that rehydration through the what we call intravenous routes. We have to give drip so that the child can have the leak. I mean, the uh, fluids and electrolytes into their body. That's 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 actually what is a worry. Something the stool that mothers worry about is the least. <laughs> so, uh, so what we are worried about is the dehydration. But the as long as the child is getting rehydrated, the body will take care of the stooling will stop when all those bacteria and viruses have been shed out and the body has replaced the intestinal lining with a new one. And that process, like I said, may take a little bit longer. It's can in some children it could be faster. But usually most time 10 to 14 days, that's when we now start. If after 14 days the child is still stooling. And we we're not worried that is there something that's going on here because we expect that the body would have completed that process by that time. Okay, the next question is from somebody else, but it's linked to that. Yeah. Falashade is asking, what else can one do to rehydrate a child who refused taking ORS? Okay, so there are other fluids. So ORS is one of them, but you can use other, you can even use your salt sugar solution in your house. Uh, so you can mix your own salt and your own sugar and your water. You can use fluid from things like rice water. If you boil rice, 
the, you allow the water on top make sure you put salt in your rice it's okay uh, there are lots of uh, home other fluids that are available in the house that can be used uh, even weak tea and things like that but ors is better because we've added those electrolytes some of those other ones may not have those electrolytes and that's it yeah all right, thank you, Doc. If you go on our group, we have a, I think we have a list on the websites of on all right on on uh, how to home treatment of diarrhea. We have a list of other fluids that you can use. So just mm -hmm. remember, depending on which area you live, so there are different area, uh, different fluid. Rice water is one that just came to my mind, but there are many other things. Fluid, yeah. even ordinary water can be used, but you have to still give all our uh, you have to give electrolytes and things like that. Ame is asking, my nine-year-old son weighs 43 kg. I noticed his penal length has reduced or shrunk. So small compared to how it used to be. Could it be as a result of his weight? Do I need to be worried? Okay. Um, uh, how old is your son? nine years old okay um i don't know how did you know the penile length has reduced or shrunk <laughs> i mean were you measuring it <laughs> were you measuring maybe, it maybe, maybe she looked at it and it it looked smaller than before to her well i i don't know uh I, it's difficult because it's usually not something that much, i mean I don't know how you are very very sure. To that conclusion, right? Because it's very unusual. You may not you may notice that it's not getting bigger. It's possible, but the fact that it has really reduced the shrunken, and I'm just like, did you measure it before? Anyway, I've no. I think you should. You may want to see your pediatrician. There's a way we measure it objectively. You know, sometimes mothers. Sorry to say, but sometimes we have some expectation. Maybe because you say, oh, this is how you should look like, or maybe you've seen another child, you know, and you are worried, you know, because some children have early puberty, and because they have early puberty, the 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 testicular volume or the penile lines may be uh, longer, and then you you are trying to compare it to your own child who is not yet maybe into puberty, and then you think, oh, maybe there's something wrong. So what I would really suggest is just to get to see a um, a pediatrician first who will objectively measure the penile length there's a lens that we normally i'm sure dr one man should be able to, if you ask on the group she'll be able to give you that information but they have to measure it themselves mm -hmm. and when we measure it then we can now know whether truly you should worry or not without doing that it's difficult to answer the question really but okay. my default mode will be not to worry because it's very unlikely it doesn't usually shrink yeah, it doesn't. It may not grow bigger. It may be smaller than what is expected, but it can't have grown bigger and then shrunk because it surely it's not growing. That's the truth. It's not growing on the puberty. It is just the same. Then it's when it gets to puberty, then it will now begin to. It, that's when you now really have the lengthening of the pen. That's that. Those are the signs of puberty in boys. You understand? Okay. The penile length will increase. The solar volume will increase. Before that time, it's basically more or less the same. <laughs> so I have okay. a feeling that maybe you are comparing because you've seen some other children, you think, or maybe your other children. Yeah. Doctor, could it also be because of the weight of the child? She's saying it's 43 kg. Yeah. The 43 kg for a nine year old is not looking that bad. I'm trying okay. to really calculate it in my head. So. Yeah, it's a little bit big, but not that very, very worrisome. So in, in obese children, what we have is buried, you know, especially the younger ones, we have the concept of what we call buried penis. In other words, the, the amount of fat to kind of cover it cover. up. Okay. Yeah, well, that, I don't think that's the same in our own case, because he's saying that he's, he's talking about the length and he's saying okay. it's reduced, and, in, and I'm not really sure that's the same thing we're talking she, about she, here. She, but she just not to worry. Yeah. Examination yeah, I there. think not to worry because I think you should just see a pediatrician. They will do objective measurements for you and tell you whether to worry or not. Okay, let's move right. on. Fumilola Amugo is asking, my 11-week son breathes like he has phlegm in his throat. Mm -hmm. 
and chest and makes a high-pitched noise when sleeping and feeding. Mm -hmm. However, the dog says his chest is clear and isn't sure what's wrong. Yeah, then there's nothing to worry about. Usually, like I've mentioned before, in those early phases, uh, children, their airway is not so, it's still being formed. So it's a little bit more elastic. So sometimes there's a, uh, I don't want to use too many medical jargon, but sometimes they collapse a lot. And so when they're breathing, it's as if you hear a lot of noise, but there's really nothing there because as they get bigger and the airway gets um um the, the it becomes stiff you know the, the it's more rigid like that of an adult then the flow of the hair the flow of hair is smoother and there's less um uh, noise like you so if a doctor has examined your child and the child's chest is clear there's nothing wrong the child is otherwise well your child is not having fever you guys don't have anything it's just that noise i think you should just leave it and don't worry usually as it gets bigger and it gets older it usually will resolve you will stop hearing most of those noises and all that so okay. the important thing is to make sure that there's nothing wrong and that's i'm happy you've seen a doctor doctor don't need to do anything i don't know mothers always have the impression they must do something about everything <laughs> they must do something about everything you don't really need to do th things about everything that sometimes we call some things leave it alone that's it that's it so <laughs> like, yes the, i'm telling you the, even some medical condition we call we say the, so the treatment here is what we call masterly inactivity you just leave it alone basically that's what he's saying just watch and then the thing will go on its own so it's not every time that we have to do something. It's not everything that needs drugs. It's not everything that you have to do something about. Just leave it up and it'll be fine. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Chiamaka yeah. is asking, good morning, ma. My one-year, five-month son doesn't like eating. He eats very well before and stopped eating since last month. He only takes pap. Well, okay. If he's eating well before, what is, is it something happened? Was the child sick? You know, or is it that the child is tired of the same food he was eating before? You know, because usually at one year, five months, they want variety. They are, you know, if, you, if I'm not saying in your own case because you didn't really specify, but if it's a child that he was eating different food before and now suddenly, if it's the same food you keep giving her all the time, then sometimes they get bored. They are bored of those same things. So you may want to try variety of things and all that. So sometimes it could also be that the child is ill. You know, poor, poor appetite could be a sign of an illness. So it may just be an early sign for you. So, but you say one month, so one month is a long time. If it's since last month, or so last month could just be, today is just the third of November, it could just be 31st. So <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. So if you may want to be able to provide more information, but basically I would say that try new varieties of food and you may be surprised that the child, maybe the child doesn't just like the same thing over and over again, you know. So even if you are doing the pap, it's okay the child can say pap. You can sneak in a lot of things into your pap. You can add, you can add milk, you can add blended crayfish, blended... Um, um, granules and things like things that will provide protein and all that into the path. Even you can add the uh, oil, a little bit of palm oil or a little bit of butter. So it will be fortified pap. It won't just be ordinary pap. But meanwhile, keep introducing new food. So I also encourage you to also do go to our uh, Facebook group and watch and do the unit calls on nutrition so that you can have more ideas and information. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Ebele Cassandra is asking, my son has a kind of curved spine. He is eight months, sits and crawls well, also stands, not in any form of pain. Just want to know if it will straighten with time. You have to say, Doctor, first. You have to say, Doctor, first. Because what your child has is what we call scoliosis. And I can imagine that if you as a mother can really say it and describe it so uh clearly i mean it's it's what's because sometimes some children have you can't even say it it takes a professional uh, uh to to be able to tell you so if you can see it that's i mean and uh and you uh you to be worthwhile seeing a professional uh i know there are some that there's really nothing wrong um they will just watch you know and it will re it will it will 
resolve on its own, but it's better to first see a professional who can examine your child, usually the orthopedic surgeons, so you can get your your general uh, your general practitioner or your family doctor to give you a referral to see the orthopedic doctor or your pediatrician. They can give you a referral to see the orthopedic doctor. And when you see them, yeah, they can um, examine the child and they'll be able to advise you on whether you need to worry or you don't need to worry. So some don't need treatment, but some may need treatments as well so it depends all right okay all right, thanks doctor um, esther onrigo is asking okay i noticed a lump on my daughter's breast when i gave birth to her then mm. i took her to hospital and was told it's omon mm. and she's two years and eight months old now and the lump is still there mm. though we went back to the hospital last three months and they said the same thing. I don't understand why the lump is there. There's no lump, it's the breast. That's just the child's breast. And there's nothing to worry about. The most important thing is that the breast is not growing bigger. So it's not a lump, it's, it's your baby's breast. But in the baby's breast, in after there's what we call um, breast enlargement in baby, because the same hormone that makes your own breast bigger for you to be able to breastfeed your child and also make the milk to flow and all that was acting on the breast of your baby because that hormone has entered into the blood of your baby and that's why the baby's breast some babies will actually have milk coming out of the breast as well and we usually tell mothers please don't massage and some mothers massage i hope you are not one of them because the depress of massaging, you're actually increasing his size, increasing his size. or it could get infected, and the baby could have what we call mastitis, infection, and things like that. So, but it's just the breast, and you, you just leave it alone because as the hormones, the hormone in the baby's blood will go down, then the breast will go down as well. But sometimes in some babies, it takes a little longer before the effects of that. Uh, uh, breast enlargement will resolve, but if there's really, it doesn't do any harm. You don't, it doesn't, you don't need to worry about it as long as your baby is not, um, uh, it's not the breast is not getting bigger because some babies could also have what we call a uh, um, uh, precocious puberty, in other words, they are developing sex, secondary sexual characteristics early, too early before the expected time, which only is around eight, nine. But if it is just the same uh, way it was before and it's not getting bigger, there's no need to worry. Just leave it alone. Okay, so uh, Esther, you don't need to worry. Just leave it alone. What your, what your doctors have told you is correct, and that's it. You don't need to worry about it. Please, I hope you are not massaging it. Just leave it alone. You don't need to do anything. It's not a lump. It's the normal breast, but it's just that it's a little bit bigger. But it will resolve. It may take a little bit longer, but usually it will not get bigger. As long as it's not getting bigger, just ignore. Leave it alone. Don't worry about All it. Right. Thank you, doctor. Ajara Abdullahi is asking, my daughter is having loss of appetite, probably because of the malaria treatment she was given. I will have to force her to take liquids like yogurt, tea, blended fruit. She only sucks. Please, doctor, what can I do to up increase her appetite? Thanks and God bless. Okay, thank you, Ajara. Please uh, try and always keep your questions short <laughs> so that we can see our faces when we are posting your question. Okay, but don't worry. The, the, you, you are absolutely correct that malaria itself can cause a loss of appetite. Then the malaria medications too can cause loss of appetite. So it's not terror. So um, you are correct, absolutely correct that that's why your child is having poor appetite. I mean, you too, I don't know whether you've had malaria before. You don't feel like eating. I mean, that's normal. So what you're doing is right. Just give your child what the child likes at this time. Don't force okay. her. Whatever she likes. If she wants ice cream, if she wants, just give it to her. Just, as long as she's taking something, no matter how small, you can give her as awful as she likes it. There's really nothing else to do to increase her appetite. Uh, you can give some multivitamin, but may not necessarily do much. But usually, we don't even recommend multivitamin. We recommend things like vitamin B complex because you should not give vitamin C for children who are on malaria treatment because it's going to interfere with the drug uh, effect. So just watch. As it, the sign that your child is getting better is the fact that the um, uh, 
uh, the the aperture will, imp will will come back on its own. That that's a sign that the treatment is working. And usually, you know, malaria treatment is just three days anyway. So within three days, if your child is getting better on the malaria treatment, uh, it should be better. And so, malaria medication like uh, camoquin could a little bit worse because those ones they tend to knock you off a little bit more. But usually, within three days, the malaria is clear. The appetite should be resuming. So there's no need to force it. There's no need to worry. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, doctor. The next question is from Ada Joyce. My baby of two years was vomiting and pooing, running temperature too. Took her to the hospital to see a pet. She said I should give more water, vegetables, and fruits. But the lady at the pharmacy said I should not give vegetables, fruits, proteinous food. I'm a bit confused, though it has stopped. Ah, uh, but if it has stopped, then you can give everything now. Now, I think the, the pharmacist was trying to tell you that as at a time your baby was still having watery stool, you don't want to give, which is correct, you don't want to give any food that can worsen the stolen. Yes, when the child is having diarrhea, I remember what I explained earlier on. The, the tummy is undergoing uh, reconstruction, if you like it, the lining of the tummy. So if you give food that requires a lot of uh, digestive process and all that, it will not be digested, it will not be absorbed, it will now be passed again with the stool, so it will worsen the diarrhea. So that is why when children are having diarrhea, we, we prefer to give them bland food. Things like things like pap, things that can easily be absorbed without too much of digestions and all that, and so that's what she meant by saying don't give me vegetables because they those ones take a lot more processing and all that. But as long as the diarrhea is not over, your doctor is also correct. You need to give those food because you need to replace uh, what your child has lost during the process of diarrhea. Because one of the things that happen when a child has diarrhea is not just that if I'm losing water or the child is losing electrolyte, the child is also may become malnourished. Because during that process, the child is not able to have enough food in, and the child is losing a lot. So, so we need to replace. We shall say you should give extra food, but those extra food should, should be after the diarrhea. So during the process of diarrhea, you don't want to give food that will worsen diarrhea. Worsen you to, yeah, you don't want to give spicy food. You don't want to give... Uh, things like milk or anything that you notice like beans, things that you notice that normally make your child to have more diarrhea. So I think both of them are saying the same thing in different ways to you. So during the process of diarrhea, don't give any food that can was in diarrhea. But after diarrhea is over, you now need to give more protein and food, more veggies, things like that. So replace what the child has lost during the mm. process. I hope it's clearer. Mm. All right, thank you. Um, Olubukola Ame is back. She's the one that was talking about penal length. Yeah, yeah. Um, she yeah. says from your observation. Exactly from because observation. I know from your observation. There's no way you could have mentioned. So, and you could be your observation could be right, it could also be wrong. So, I think it's better to have an objective assessment by a pediatrician. Yeah. Okay, Ada Joyce again, the person that was talking about vegetables, pharmacist, and all. Yeah. Um, after running all the tests required, all results was normal and negative. Doc, please, what could be the cause of this vomiting, stooling, and eye temperature? Yeah, there are many. The commonest cause of diarrhea or gastroenteritis in children is a viral cause. They are viruses, and when you do tests for viral infection, everything will be normal. You're not going to come. Up, you're not going to. You're not going to have any abnormalities. So that's 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 even better. I mean, you don't have to worry. So it's most likely it's a viral infection. It is not every test that we do that you must see something abnormal in your results. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes we don't get any abnormality. The most important thing is that your diary, the child's diarrhea has stopped and your child is well now. So don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Okay. Adeniro Cecilia is asking, my three weeks old cries uncontrollably almost every night. And every means of soothing him proves abortive. Please, won't the cry have effect on him? Two, can he be overfed? How do I know if I'm overfeeding him? Thank you. Yeah, and that's a first time mom. When you see like three or four questions in one paragraph, <laughs> you must, I'm sure that uh, Cecilia is a first time mom. Okay, so number one, your child is having colic. Okay, so colic is common in newborn babies. And the good news is that it's just going to stop. 
within three months. You don't need to worry yourself about it. So you just need to soothe the baby. You can cuddle. You can do that. Sometimes we give things like infacol. It may help. It may not help. But what you, what you describe is typically what we call colic, infant colic. And it's something that will stop. The crying doesn't do anything to the baby. It does not, it, don't be worried about I know mothers worry a lot about that. Whether when babies cry a lot, that, that means their babies are going to... Uh, maybe something is happening to them or they're going to, no, there's nothing wrong. They're only exercising their lungs like my mom works. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with them. So they'll be fine. Um, okay. So how do you know whether you're overfeeding your baby or not? So babies, luckily, they, they are not greedy people. They tend to take what they need. Uh, when they are full, they take off their mouth. Mm -hmm. So but. I understand, I know where you're coming from because when babies have colic, sometimes they suck. Not because they are hungry, but the sucking is a kind of a soothing thing for them. It's a pleasurable thing. So they are using it to That's mask the discomfort. Exactly. They are using it to mask the discomfort. So they just want you, they just want you to cuddle them. They just want to be close to you. They just want something to kind of ease their discomfort. So sometimes they find that the sucking is the easiest way of having their mother close by of having your of your having your warmth near them and sucking is also a pleasurable thing even if they are not rich so that's why you see them suck then they stop sucking then when you try to take off the breast they, they begin to grab it again so they are just using it as a soothing thing so you don't need to worry about overfeeding your baby babies know how to regulate themselves as long as you are not giving additional food I, i'm assuming you're exclusively breastfeeding i hope i'm right uh -huh. If you are not exclusively breastfeeding, if you are doing bottle, then we need to calculate how much you need to give because in each bottle, there's an amount of uh, milk. So depending on your weight of your baby, there's an amount total that the baby should take in a day. So that one, you have to be, you have to be calculated. Both of the your uh, the teens also have those uh, um, information on them anyway. But if you are doing exclusive breastfeeding, don't worry yourself. Just keep breastfeeding. You're three weeks old, you can't overfeed the baby. When baby is full, baby will stop sucking, then you can put the baby to bread. I mean, to uh, after bopping, then you put them to sleep. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether it's the last question. No, yeah. it's not the last question. Okay. Yeah. Another option is to feed him according to schedule, but we generally don't recommend that. So you can feel like every three hours at least. The way, okay, the way to know whether you are really feeling your baby right, okay, is like apart from the, the the most objective way is that babies that are on right feeding will be gaining weight. Another way to know is that when you finish feeding your baby, they should sleep for three, three, two to three hours before the next feed. So baby usually is every two to three hours. At the beginning, because they are still trying to regulate it, it's maybe as if they are sucking all the time. You also need to make sure you are properly positioning the baby and you are lactating well and the breast is entering, the, you know, it's properly positioned, properly attached to the breast and all that. But usually most babies, they feed every three hours. So your baby is just three weeks. So I know you are seeing that phase where you are just getting to set you into a pattern routine and all those crying will stop. All those not sleeping will stop. Don't worry. I'm just reassuring you. I know you are you're yeah, like, what is happening to me? That is what we call motherhood. But with time, you will get a hang of it. But don't worry, you're not going to overfeed your baby. They know when to stop, and you can't force them even when they don't want to. All right, okay. Let's move on. I think our time is you know, almost running up now. Chinaya Uche is asking, my children complain of joint pains despite being treated of malaria. What else can I do? There are many other causes of joint pains beyond malaria. So I would recommend you go back to see your doctor and they will uh, tell you what to do. Yeah. Were they treated? Okay, yeah, yes. okay. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, but color is telling us it's actually look buried in. Okay, fine. Yeah, but yeah. if you think that's the case, then you don't need to worry. Uh, just make sure you don't overfeed your child. Uh, make sure you don't... Um, uh avoid junk food the best way to get uh, is a boy let him do a lot of exercises he could join a football get a club or games he must have his sports that he plays regularly and no junks all this going to apologies to all the eateries <laughs> i don't want to mention him thank god i didn't mention anybody's name but all those things all those pastries and all those things they sell like and sometimes some of us use it 
taking them out to all those places as a way of rewarding the children and the, or you're always stuck in your house with all the fizzy drinks, all the biscuits and junks and stuff, you may need to stop it and make sure that they just eat the regular meals, no, no juice or things packed into their lunch boxes and things like that. Exercise, healthy food, and they'll be fine. Actually, at this age, when they're becoming teenagers, you know, you really need to make sure you incorporate that healthy diet in them. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Chiamaka is asking, he was sick, he was always having running nose, and we have been to the hospital, and after the test, doctor said his chest is clear. They gave him some treatment, and there is no... Oh, I think she's the one that was talking about the child that has breathes at the Yes, yeah, oh, okay. there's a breathing. Oh, okay, so if the child has infection before, it may be an upper way infection. It's not every infection that the chest will have to have noise. But you say you have been treated. If there's anyway, if you are still worried, I guess you are still a worried mom. I would recommend you see a pediatrician. I don't know whether the doctor you saw before is just a GP or you may want to go see a pediatrician because you're so worried. I think it's better to see a pediatrician. Just be sure there's nothing else because there could be other things. It's possible, but because I thought you were talking about an otherwise elderly child who is just having a noise. Yeah. But your baby is eleven weeks. That's very. 11 weeks already having so much infection. I would recommend you continue just do only exclusive breastfeeding and see a pediatrician. At that age, we shouldn't be having this kind of serious infection and all that. And it may be nothing actually, but you say he has running nose and uh, did he have fever? I didn't get that. No, she, she, didn't, she didn't mention fever. Because running nose could just be viral, cold, and all that. And all you need to do is keep the baby warm, breastfeed. And your baby will be fine. Anyway, I recommend seeing a pediatrician. Okay. Uh, uh, next question. I think Nikke. Please, ma, there is a lump on the forehead of my baby. It started as a small reddish dot and from a month after birth, and it's growing bigger now. My baby is 11 months now and it's still under observation. Yeah. Can they operate it, ma? I'm in the UK. Yeah, I think it's like it sounds like a hemangioma. That description is so classical. Uh, usually, we don't operate in hemangioma because they can resolve on their own. So, if it's under observation, because we think let's watch and wait whether it can resolve. It's not something you want to operate because it has a lot of complications during the operation and all that. So, if it's if it's something that resolve on its own, why do you want to put the child under the knife for that? So we we'll just watch. If it's not getting bigger, just if it's it's getting bigger, but um, it depends on how big it is. If it's not causing any pressure effects or any complication, I'm sure your doctors know what you're doing. So if they said let's see observe, it means we can still observe. So I would say don't worry about it. It can be operated. Yes, there are ways to treat it, but. We will, there are indications for doing that because some of them, majority of them, will just go on their own. Okay, Esther is giving us a feedback that um, it is not She's going bigger. So, so yeah, the, the breast lump. Yeah, so just leave it alone. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's good. All right, last, almost the last question. Again. Yeah. She's Tell saying he doesn't eat and she has tried different meals and there's still no improvement. Okay, I think it's a repeat. Okay, we've answered that already. This is the lady with the child with the dots and it, that is growing into a lump. The one uh, with the observation. She wants to have uh, your number. Uh, you can send us an email at ask as ask the pediatricians does come. Yeah, send us an email, then we can chat. Okay, uh, we're almost running up. Okay, is asking one of my triplets of two years old daughter just started vomiting and didn't eat. Whatever I give her to eat, she vomited. I even gave her boost, she vomited. I, I gave her ORS water, also vomited. Please, what is the cost of the vomiting? And what else no, can I, I use to stop it? She has even lost you have to, weight. Ah, uh, you have to go to the hospital. A day, Mary, you have to go to the hospital right now. If your child is vomiting, it's not tolerating ORS, it's losing weight because of the vomiting. That child needs to be in the hospital. You shouldn't be here online. It's one of we've, we've stated it. It's one of the when to take your child to the hospital when the child has uh, vomiting or diarrhea. If the child is not able to tolerate at all. There's no option than to go and give the child intravenous fluid. So you really need to take the child to the hospital. Please do it so right now. 
and let us have a feedback. Um, yeah, it could be anything. It could be infection. It could be anything. But the most important is not even what is causing the vomiting. The most important is to stop the vomiting and to rehydrate the child, and that will have to be done in the hospital since your child is not able to take over rest. Yeah. Sorry, Tommy. Yeah, no problem. Adironke is asking, good morning, ma. Please, I want to know what my two weeks old newborn baby girl grunts in her sleep and brings back the breast milk. Yeah, yeah, they... I don't know what you mean by grunts in her sleep. I, I know babies make some sound when they're sleeping, so I, it's, you need to let us know uh, clearer uh what sound does she make so some can make sound when sleeping like i already mentioned some of those sounds are really normal uh as regards the bringing back breast milk you i guess you meant reflux okay so that is also not it's just a minor issue so what we normally say is that before you put the baby to sleep you try and keep them upright um right. rub them longer and then yeah so and then um let's wait for another 15 30 minutes before putting them to lie flat and then so as they go bigger the reflux will tend to stop some babies have it worse than the others some babies have it so bad that sometimes we have to thicken their breast milk sometimes we have to give them other anti-reflux medication but majority of babies don't have those type and those are the ones that they'll be vomiting every time they'll be losing weight Th that's those who really have the reflux disease but most children just have mild reflux. In other words, it, uh, it's not every time they bring out the milk. Sometimes they do. But with time, as they get bigger, your baby's just two weeks, so it's still very, yes, I mean, I mean, just very young. So, but usually by the time they're about two, three months, they tend to, it tends to resolve. So it's not something to worry about. You can keep the baby upright a little bit longer before putting them flat. So it could help. But it's, it, I won't worry about it. Okay, and the sound, I'm not so sure it's something to worry about. You may record it and send it to us or show your pediatrician as well so that whether it's something to worry about or not. Okay. Rachel is asking, my son is one year and seven months but still poops like a baby. What you poop? What what mean by uh, poop like a baby? <laughs> if your baby is having watery stool, that's diarrhea. And if it's happening... More than three or four times in a, I mean, three times in a in a twenty four hour period. That's definition of diarrhea. But if it's just once in a while, then you may want to watch whether it does it happen with a particular food or something. Then you may need to watch is it food intolerance and all that. But a baby at that age should not be having watery stool. Should be having well formed stool. So you may want to discover your data about that. Just be sure there's nothing going on wrong. Thank you, Talabi, for saying it no. <laughs> Aluva says, my daughter just turned one last month. She does not eat well. Any supplement drugs that I can give her? None. None. It's still food. The treatment is uh, uh, the treatment is food, okay, uh, Aluba. So just encourage her to keep eating. You may want to go and watch our, uh, do our nutrition course on complementary feeding. I'm sure you'll find it uh, helpful. Okay, you say you have to force feed her. Please stop. Don't, don't, don't force feed. I, I think you really need to do this course. It will tell you how to encourage food and all that. Okay. And what's the best kind of milk to give her? There's no best kind of milk. Any milk is fine. Usually mm -hmm. from age of one, they can take even the adult milk. But if you want to also use any of the follow-up milk, any of the toddler milk, you can use any one that your pocket can afford. So none of them has paid us for advertisements. So we won't say any names. So, but any milk in the store that's for age-appropriate milk, you know, for toddlers, if you want to, even your normal milk is fine. It's okay. The one that the child takes milk, that's what we recommend. My baby just refuses to eat. He's losing weight. Oh, my yeah. God. She's yeah, I think she's... How old I think is she sent baby? a question earlier. Okay, she sent it earlier. And how old yeah, I think she sent a question earlier. I can, uh... I'm not sure sure we've seen that question. Anyway, but no, no let's mm -hmm. answer it again. Yes. So the baby is not oh, this, this is age. This is his age. Yeah, he just baby, said he's losing. losing weight. Yeah. If your baby is losing weight, you need to take the baby to the hospital. So I'm worried about that. Um, it's not just that baby is not eating. If the baby is just not eating, I would have said, okay, go and read about uh what tips on how to encourage appet I mean to help children to eat on healthy eating habits and things like that. But your baby is losing weight. 
that is a red flag for a pediatrician. You must see one immediately. So please go and do that right now. Adelti is asking, please, I don't know if questions of 11 years old could be answered in this group. If yes, please, I want to know the best drug to use for a boy of 11 years old with asthma, apart from inela and ventolin. Okay, Adelti, a, a pediatrician sees children from zero, day zero, sometimes we see them from the womb but anyway, uh, but we see them from day zero to 18 years. So that's the definition of a child according to the United Nations. Any child is anybody who is 18 years old and younger. So we see anybody who is in that age group. So 11 year old qualifies to be, um, uh, qualified to be a pediatrician's child, <laughs> patient. So we will answer your question. Uh, yeah, so what's the best drug to use I'm not so sure what you mean by the best drug. So if your child has asthma, there are what we call controller medications that your child needs to take every day. And then there are what we call a reliever medication that the child needs to use when he's having an attack. It's really the child has the severe or chronic asthma because the, from your question, I assume your child is falling into the category that is having symptoms often. And that means the child should be on controller medication. So. You really need to be seeing a going to the asthma clinic or seeing a doctor for the management of your child's asthma and so that they can be writing the appropriate medication for you. So there are inhalers for it could be in form of inhaler, it could be in form of uh, other ways, but most of them are inhalers that your child needs to use every day. Like they contain steroids, usually most of them are steroid with a longer acting um, uh bronchodilator so you could that the child is used every day then when the child is having an attack that's when they use the ventolin inhaler so i'm not sure whether the inhaler you mentioned first is that type then that child should be using it but it is not something we can even just tell you like on hair your child needs to be assessed on his own by a doctor so if you have not yet been seeing a doctor for your child asthma regularly you really need to go and see them so that your child's asthma can be controlled Okay, I hope that is helpful. I dare say. Um, Kafilat is asking, my baby of sixteen months only has two teeth. Okay, Nothing to worry about. about. So don't worry, the teeth will come. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, don't worry at all. I'm serious. Yeah. Okay. No. We've we to this. That. Okay, we've answered that. Okay, I think we are rounding up now. Uh, yeah, okay. Is it good? Lesson is asking, is it good for a baby of two plus to eat like an adult? Two plus two hours, two days, two weeks, two months, two years. You know, you have to be very specific when you're asking a pediatrician when you attend the age of the pediatrician. you I mean, when you're telling a pediatrician two or three, we don't understand that because we see them from two days, two hours, two weeks, two months. Two years, so you really need to very, very specific. But I'm assuming you are talking about two years. Yes, a, a child of two years should be eating the same food as every other member of the family. So that's exactly what she tried to be doing. So there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. I think this is just feedback. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Last. Let's round up. How does a G6 PD deficient baby's mom handle visitors? Especially when it is not something one should be indiscreet about, and at the same time, the baby's well-being is topmost priority. There's, there's no reason to. There's nothing. GCPD has nothing to do with visitors. GCPD has to do with drugs or food or things you should avoid. I'm sure your visitors are not going to give your baby any food or anything. So I mean, there's nothing for you to be worried about. Your visitors don't do anything to your baby. There's a list of things you, as a mother of a um, juicy spirit child, should avoid. Things like camphor, naphthalene balls, uh, beans, and things like that, depending on the age of your baby. So you are the one that needs to make sure you don't expose your baby to those things. But visitors have nothing to do to your baby. They, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing about juicy spirit and visitors, unless your visitor is now giving your baby something or rubbing something on your baby or i mean i'm just wondering how your baby will be exposed to a visitor that will cause any uh emo for those who don't know gcspd gcspd deficiencies glucosis 
for, uh, uh, for so let's say the hydrogenase deficiency is a particular enzyme in the body that people that have this deficiency of this uh, enzyme, that if they're exposed to certain agents, they they tend to immobilize, they tend to break down the red blood cells and they can have um, anemia, jaundice and things like that. So the mm -hmm. most important thing, so we have a list of those things that they must avoid, there are certain drugs they must avoid, there are certain food they must ab 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 avoid, there are certain substances they must avoid. Mm -hmm. So for a mother, all you need to do is to avoid those substances, but you don't really need to do anything else. So don't worry about this stuff. These stuff are welcome to visit your baby. All right. Okay, okay. Um, our audience, please, can we stop with the questions? Yeah, so we want to finish with the I ones we have now. I want to finish question because we, we were also a little bit down. Uh, yes. Otherwise, we stop, I think, once we answer these questions. Shinesa oh is asking, good morning, ma. Please, my baby is almost four months. It doesn't suck the way it used to. It sucks more while sleeping, but when he's awake, he sucks for three to five minutes, then he won't suck again for two hours. Please, do I need to be worried? He weighs 7.5 kg now. No, you don't need to be worried. Uh, your weight, baby's weight is absolutely fine. And it's because your baby is um, more efficient sucker. When they get so that they are more efficient, so they, they can get as much from the breast within five minutes of sucking than when they were still a baby because that time they were not sucking as well. So you don't need to worry at all about your baby. Okay, I think we're rounding up. Yes, we've done all this. Yes, we've done all this. Yes, okay, any glass? Okay, how old is any any Eden's child again? No, she's, she just wrote the age and weight now is eight months and it weighs 8.6 kg yeah, that, that's perfect i'm not worried about your baby i think maybe your baby was uh 8.6 is good for an 8 8 kg child so that's the perfect weight for your baby so what you need to do is to encourage the baby to eat but right now the baby's weight is fine uh, i'm i'm I, okay you've seen a pediatrician already so please do as the pediatrician uh of uh, advice okay i think we've gotten all that yeah okay fine we've gotten okay. eight months eight points that's a very good weight don't worry i, I know sometimes mothers want their baby to be so shabby and they compare <laughs> the baby to other babies who are actually overweight we pediatricians we don't want your babies to be too fat so shabby we want your baby to just have a good weight and for me i can trust me, eight, eight, eight months old baby weighing 8.6 is a perfect weight. You just need to encourage okay. baby to keep on eating the food. So do the nutrition course and you'll be fine. All right. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. City uh -huh. talking about GCPD. Perhaps yeah. a guest has applied mental innocently and physical wow. visit. Why will a guest do that? I mean, why will you go to somebody's house and go and apply something to their baby? I think some people have not been sued or I, I don't know. I, I mean, that is ridiculous. Why will you go why will you visit a person's house and apply things? Anyway, Titi Lokwe, you don't you don't expose your baby to visit us like that. I'm so sorry. I, but I think some people don't know what they call boundary. I mean, I can't even, even as a pediatrician, when I go visit babies in the, in when I go visit people, families, friends, and I don't touch the babies. I don't. On they, unless some of them will not say, Doctor, I want you to <laughs> touch my baby. And I say, Please give me hand sanitizer. I will go through all those drama because I want the other people to know what is right to do. Sure, I, don't, yes. okay, I would just say, Look at the baby and that's it. Why will why will somebody come to your house and start applying mentor to your baby for words? I mean, that is ridiculous. I mean, I don't know. You need to be careful. Anyway, if that's the kind of you need to make sure those kind of people you don't bring your baby. And I always tell you guys, keep your baby in your room. Eyes, baby, you come and greet the visitors. Let baby be in the house. I mean, you don't have to bring your baby house for every visitor. Oh. And that's one thing we Nigerians, especially Nigerians, we like we have that culture. Everybody that come must carry baby. It is actually carry the baby. And none of them are coming <laughs> without their star warriors in their fingers. I mean, that is the honest truth. And the next thing they just come and it's not disturbing them, but this baby is new. This baby is is his immune system is not yet fully matured, and they just come and dump it on the baby. I, but I've never, I mean, I've heard of people carrying baby, but this is the height of it. Somebody coming to, to a visitor's, I mean, a guest coming okay, to. No, I think I think I think what she's saying is the visitor is the one that applied the mental on him or herself, not on the baby. 
Uh, oh, I was trying no, to read the okay. question again. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I would have yeah. been so sorry. <laughs> I thought you did that too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. The okay. one that I used the mentor. Because I was like, why would you go and apply mentor on the baby? So, but anyway, um, I don't even think that should really affect your baby per se, unless if you still really have to carry your baby so close. And see, boys, under the same thing I'm saying. Not everybody has to carry your baby. Even if it's just a apply mentor on him or herself, and the visitor has not touched your baby, or it's not, it's, it shouldn't really affect your baby per se. I won't really call it exposure because, he, of course, there yeah, the smell, but I don't think the smell is enough to trigger off something. But the most important thing is that people should just avoid carrying baby that they are not your own. Okay, so me, I think we've got a go okay. now. Okay, <laughs> last question. Yeah. Um, Neka is saying, I learned to take the baby to a quiet place with less distraction to suck well while awake. Please, that's what good. do you think about that? Ma? That's perfect. I mean, that's good. That's why you're a mom. You know how to solve all the problems. I mean, so you, you know your baby better than us. So whatever works for you, work for your baby is perfect as long. But just trust me, babies are more efficient suckers at that age. I know somebody they can be distracted, but they also don't starve. They don't starve. So they will eat what is enough. I'm going by the weight of your baby. I am not worried at all. I'm not worried. Okay, we're done for today. Thank all right. You. Thank you very much, Doctor. It was a very interesting open house today. Thank you very much to everybody that joined us. Really appreciate you. A gentle reminder, you can also advertise your products and services on this ATP live that we do every Saturday. So please so you keep our program ongoing. So <laughs> support, support, support us. Yes. And advertise your program. You can send us an email to get our prize lists and all. Thank you very much once again. And of course, even though the live is over, you can still share the videos and you can still watch all over again. Thank you very much. See you next Saturday. Uh, just before we go, Tommy, I just want to say that because I see a lot of people after we've gone offline, they always drop questions. So I want That's to true. let them know how to ask questions after the live broadcast. So if you if you see have questions on child health, uh, number one, I, I, I'm sure Tommy has done the introduction, but let me just remind us again that this program is brought to you by AXI Pediatricians Foundation. We are the owner of AXI Pediatrician Facebook group, AXI Pediatrician foundation page, active pediatricians websites, active pediatrician YouTube channel. So we have so many platforms for you to engage with us or to learn about child health issues. The, the best platform is our Facebook group because we have over half a million members and we have lots of moderators, lots of professionals uh, on that group. I'm Bimi Salaboy, I'm the pediatrician and Tommy is one of our moderators or coordinators on the group as well so if you have any questions after this program go to our facebook group if you go to facebook and just type ask the pediatrician you will see the i mean it will, it will pop up you can go to the group we don't encourage you to ask questions on our page because we we don't have as much uh uh, moderators managing the page, but if you go, but the group is also linked to the page, so you will see somewhere on the page where it says join the group. So as long as you join our group or you go to our group, you can post your question 24-6, not 24-7, 24-6. So Mondays to Saturdays, we have people working 24 hours. If you post your question, your question will be approved within less than 48, 72 hours it will be approved and either a moderator or a professional will answer your question. So the fact that the ATP life is over does not mean you can't say ask your question, but please ask on our group, Facebook group, drop your question. And if you have friends that you know will benefit from this um, question and answer, you can join, add them to the group. We'll be very happy to have them. It's a very, very well organized group. We don't tolerate any excesses or rudeness and all that is strictly about child health issues alone. So drop your question in our group. You will get faster answers that way. Alternatively, you can also send us an email on axipediatricians.com and you also get your, uh, uh, we can post your question. Usually we reserve that for anonymous, uh, anonymous questions, yes. So, and if you also want to support us on Ask the Pediatrician, uh, we, because we're a foundation, we're into ex community health outreaches and supporting the orphans and vulnerable children. We're about well-being of 
all children globally, especially those in the developing countries and in Africa generally. So if you want to support us, you can sponsor our programs, you can advertise on our page, you can just donate to us. We have our platform on, on gold, GoFundMe, or if you're in Nigeria, you can donate to our asset generation account. If you ask us, we'll give you all the details, or you can advertise on any of our platform, our ATP Live, or on our group, we'll be very happy to, if you have any product for mothers and children generally, we'll be very happy to partner with you. So once again, apologies for starting late, apologies for all the technical issues, but thank you so much for joining us this morning. And thank you, Tommy, for, <laughs> for holding the force for me. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am, for joining. Goodbye. Right. Hey, everyone.